Hi, I'm The Mitten, and you're listening to The Mitten on Knitting. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to episode 21 of The Mitten on Knitting. There's only 43 days left till Rhinebeck, so let's see what I've been up to. In Loose Threads this week, I've been waiting for the competition uh, registration to open. It was scheduled to open today according to the Duchess Sheep and Wool Growers Association um, scheduling. However, I've gone to the uh, Sheep and Wool website and see that they're not ready to open it until September 5th. So yet another, another delay from the website. You know, this I don't understand because you know, they've got a year. It's a whole year. And most of the stuff doesn't change, so not really getting that. But I guess uh, things are happening in the background that aren't apparent uh, to us attendees. Anyway, um, so no competition uh, pieces uh, can be entered yet. However, they are going to still have the cutoff on October 1st, um, so it just means that we have less time to get, uh, I have less time to get my stuff together um, for the competition. And, uh, well, I guess there's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm pretty prepped and uh, just about ready to go there. Uh, so that's what's up with loose threads. What's fitting the mitten this week? I've been wearing socks, of course, because, you know, I think by now you, you know how much I love my socks. Um, and also, uh, I've been using the Gainsey shawl uh, in the office as a shawl and uh, on the train, both as a pillow and as a shawl, because that air conditioning's been getting kind of cool. We're doing those uh, New York weather days where I have... Uh, 40 to 60 degree drop in temperature from home to the city so or rise in temperature from home to the city depends on which direction I'm going um, so really hot and nasty downstate uh, nice and cool upstate and uh, that's the time of year where you realize the value of dressing in layers and in wool um, so that's been really handy. I did wear the sweater one day, uh, just just for a few hours around the house, because uh, it was a little chilly, and I like my sweater. Um, so that's what's been fitting the mitten. And what have I been knitting? I've been knitting the 2016 Rhinebeck sweater. Um, 24-7. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, every day, all my knitting has gone there. It hasn't gone to any other distraction. Um, so I actually um, am about well, 16 rows on the cuff and 11, so 37 rows left to go, uh, which sorry, 27 rows left to go um, till I'm done with the second sleeve. Um, so I'm really happy about that. Should be finishing it up tomorrow. I was looking, I think I'm going to have to cake up one more ball of yarn um, for the button band and then it'll be a sweater. Wow. And I, I think the fit it it seems yeah I've been trying it on I I think it I think it seems kind of nice um, I know it's going to loosen up when I wash it uh, because it's made out of the same type of uh, yarn that the 2015 sweater was um, so I think it's it fits uh, it fits well now and it'll be a little loose after I wash it and I think that'll be a nice comfortable fit for the festival. Um, at least that, that's what I'm hoping is going to happen. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what the yarn says. Um, what have I been spinning? 
nothing on the wheel. Um, but that little last tiny bit of merino on the drop spindle has been finished. Um, all I have to do is measure it off on the nitty knotty and see if I got my 40 yards. I really hope I got my 40 yards. I'm really not sure. Uh, it's, it's practically cobweb. Um, so it's, it's hard for me to judge, you know, how much is there. But, uh, I still have that hip strings buoy sitting on the nitty knotty and I have to take that off to wash it. Um, so I'll take that off and then string up the merino on the nitty knotty and measure that out. Hopefully it'll be 40. Um, that would be great. If not, then, you know, I have to make a decision. Do I want to not put in for a drop spindle? Do I want to do a totally brown merino um, spin on the drop spindle? Or do I want to just add with the brown merino to the cream? Uh, so that decision will have to be made depending upon what length it is that I come out with. So I'm really hoping for 40 yards because I would like to come back next week and say, hey, it's all done, everything's done and ready to go. Um, that's, that's the dream. That's why I do the podcast. Keep me on track and keep me finished ahead of time. That would be awesome. Well, what's finished? Well, the merino on the drop spindle is finished. Um, so, let's see, that, that brings me, uh, what was that, maybe an ounce? <laughs> There's so little roving that got spun up for that. It's just like the teeniest tiny bit of roving ever. Um, but, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of happy about that because it took me so gosh darn long to um, start spinning that finely on the drop spindle. I'm not there yet on the, on the spinning wheel, but on the drop spindle, and then I think it, I think it came out, you know, pretty nice. I know that it's not perfection, but I'm not looking for perfection. I'm not a machine, um, and, but. Yeah, so there's some really fine areas where I was just like, you know, three strands of merino spun together, and there were some little thicker areas where there might have been, you know, 30 strands of merino spun together, um, usually right up against each other, because, you know, after you spin thin, you have to spin thick just to make up for it. But I figure laws, law of averages, and uh, hopefully... Um, the judges will see that, you know, all of the same amount of yarn is in every foot. Maybe I'll get a point for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. But anyway, um, so that's what's finished. The, the drop spindle with merino on it. And I, I, I took it out to the Dutchess County Fair um, Saturday when I went and uh, was an exhibitor um, in the wool room. Oh. The fleeces that they that won at the fair that are going to be on sale at Rhinebeck, they are stunning. They're just super, super gorgeous. I'd gotten up from my chair just to uh, go and stretch my legs, and a bag of fleece fell right on my chair. I mean, like, seconds after I got up. Uh, Mr. Mitten said that it was uh, lucky that I wasn't sitting there. I could have been knocked out cold by this fleece. But I took it as a sign as that was the fleece I should bring home with me. It was saying, take me with you. Don't leave me here behind. Um, but I didn't. Uh, but, oh, those fleeces that they have this year are real, real stunners. I know they always put the champions in the you know, all the ribboned fleeces in there, so not everyone's a stunner, but there's, I think there's a much better quality of fleece that's coming in this year than there was last year, and that probably has to do um, with the weather that we've gotten. It's been, in my opinion, more consistent, um, which, in again, my opinion, 
gives you a better fleece at the end of the day. So anyway, drop spindle done. Fleeces look great. And uh, there you have it. And now a word not from a sponsor. Yarnitecture, the newest book from Jillian Moreno, is 240 pages of planning and building tips and techniques, from the exploration of fleece, bats, and roving, through drafting, plying, and finishing, Jillian helps guide you through to your perfect yarn, even including 12 new patterns by leading knitwear designers to show off your finished product. Yarnitecture by Jillian Moreno from Story Publishing is worth the read. Get it now on Amazon. Or stop by to see Jillian in person at Rhinebeck. In stash up down this week, um, well, stash down because I finished up the merino. So that was what an ounce, an ounce of merino that uh, that I got all done, and that's fine. I'm actually, I'm feeling like I don't have a lot of stash when it comes to yarn, but I'm feeling like I have a lot of stash when it comes to um, roving and uh, uh, fleece. So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with what I have right now, and I think it sets me in a good position for what I want to get when I get to the festival. Um, I think I'll be able to stay well within my budget this year, um, which would be very awesome because we did take that hit um, when we had to get the brakes fixed on the truck. So I, I do need to uh, keep that in mind as I am putting together everything for what I want to get. And, and um, so that'll be fine. But yeah, stash down just... Uh, just a little bit of merino, and that's that's okay with me. In where I want to be this week, um, well, you know, I want to be at a sheep festival somewhere. Don't care where. Um, I'm really excited about it uh, this week. Um, I think the closer I get to having everything done and and in order, um, the more excited. I am to actually going and attending and um, going to the um, Dutchess County Fair really helped whet the appetite, so to speak, uh, because, you know, all the sheep are there and you get to go up and pet them and, and love them and tell them how beautiful they are. No, I didn't pet any of them because I was spending the night didn't have a place to go wash my hands afterwards unless I walked to another building and it was really hot and humid out. Although it was really cool in the wool room because the ladies from the guild set up these really wonderful fans that uh, I think one of the attractions to the wool room is that people can come in and cool off a little bit. But it makes it very comfortable for spinning and dealing with wool, especially in a hot and humid August day. Um, so anyway, where I want to be is, um, I want to be at a wool festival. In grabby paws, stuff I want to get, but probably won't. <sighs> I've been looking at rowing and yarn and roving and yarn. And you know what I realized? I'm really I'm looking at the colors. I'm trying to figure out what colors are the color for the year. Like last year's color I was looking for was yellows. I really wanted to spin and knit in yellows. Nobody had them, of course, but it's what I wanted. Um, the year before that, I was looking for rust, reds, and oranges, which I totally was able to get. You know, I got that uh, watercolors too from Periwinkle. Karen at Periwinkle, which turned into the Rip and Shawl, and a couple of skeins of um, sock yarn um, that are in those rust colors. So that's what I wanted the year before. And uh, this year, well, this year it's all about, I'm thinking purples, maybe blues. 
I haven't done purples and blues in forever. Blues I try not to because they kind of end up falling into my stash anyway. But um, purples I just don't tend to purchase. Maybe because I don't buy the right one. I end up with like some royal purple when I really want um, something much deeper. Or I want something much closer to a lavender. So, Grabby Paws this week is um, looking for colors. In dough this week, my dough was, um, well, I don't think it was that bad, considering that I only kind of vaguely remember it had something to do with my sweater. Uh, I messed something or another up, and you know what? I'm actually going to have to go look it up, so let me put this on hold for a second. You know, I was looking for it, which I still haven't found it, but I remembered. I got nabbed again with another at the same time at each end, and um, so I had to, I only had to go back two rows this time. But, once again, need to read the directions and follow the directions. Because it works so much better that way when you read and follow, as opposed to read and immediately forget. Um, so that's my dough this week. When will I learn? Probably never, but, you know. Obviously it wasn't such a huge traumatic event because I only vaguely remember it. I It happened at the beginning of the week, so, you know, I've been doing other things, but but still. Oh, one day I'll remember. Don't. Um, where I'll be? Well, this week's town board meeting week, and uh, so I'll be at the town board meeting. Uh, I was at the Dutchess County Fair. I'll be home and work, working home. And uh, Mr. Mitten has promised, because he chock pack full, packed chock full, sorry, <laughs> this past weekend. So he's promised that this coming weekend will be peace and quiet and rest and relaxation. Um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I've heard that before. But uh, it, it does sound nice, especially while I'm recording this Monday night. Usually I would record on Sunday. Um, but uh, <laughs> we got home late. Uh, we went to uh, Mr. Mitten's family. We had an event. So anyway, uh, that's where I'll be. Home and work, work and home. Although I did hear of something going on over at uh, Hudson Valley Sheep and Wolco. I should check that out. Maybe. some No, home and work, work and home. That's where I'll be. All right. So that brings us to questions, and there aren't any. There are absolutely no questions this week, um, which means I don't have to answer any. Woohoo! Which means I am done. And that's it for the podcast for the week. And there you have it. There it is. And I got nothing else. And, well, I probably could go on about something. But believe me, it would be boring. You go have a good day. Go outside. Go play. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye. <laughs>